Good morning and welcome to Crafted Carvings. My name is Jennifer and I wanted to share with you today how I keep my workshop temperature controlled as much as possible. So I'm in a 16 foot tall space that has it has some insulation. Uh, it's a metal building, metal shell, um, and it does have some insulation, uh, thankfully, because uh, I don't know how uh, I'd be able to keep this uh, at all climate controlled for any amount of money if I didn't have some sort of insulation in here. But um, it does get cold here, even though I'm in Southern California. It gets cold. It gets hot. In the summer, it can it can be as hot as uh, 115 degrees outside. In the in the winter. Um, Highs during the day generally get up to 50 um, for the most part. I, I think it's been very rare that it hasn't gotten past the 40s uh, for a high. However, um, again, because it's got some insulation in here, it will over time uh, get that overnight cold in, this, um, in my side here. And it can get to 20 degrees overnight. So when you have a long night, and you have some insulation and you do eventually lose the heat from the day and then now it's cold. So now even though it might be 60 degrees outside during the day, it might still be you know, 40, 50 degrees inside because uh, it's going to be uh, slow in warming up as well. So need to have a source of heat. So um, it's my pellet stove. I got it from a scratch and dent uh, sale um, company that does a lot of Amazon pellets. So I got a really great deal on it. But it was giving me some issues at the end of last season, and I limped through because uh, I have alternative sources. So I also have a bullet heater. Now this is not my preferred method. I got it there. It was, that's where it stays during the summer because it's out of the way. And uh, that runs on diesel, and uh, it puts, shoots a flame out the front. Well, not really a flame, but you know, shoots the heat out the front. So it's um, pretty hot. Uh, and you're in here in a workshop and you have a lot of dust and everything so not necessarily the best best safest way of, um, of heating but it does take the bite off the air really quick and for safety purposes where I would put it is right over here I have a, a metal metal piece that um, I have it right next to that um, and make sure all the dust in front is all swept up um, but it does also have fumes, so that's another reason why I don't prefer um, my bullet heater. Um, so I really like the pellet stove. But anyhow, I managed to get through last season with um, with just using that, as well as I've got a few electric space heaters. But electricity is expensive here, so it's not something that I want to use a whole lot of. So anyhow, I was getting E1 error messages on my pellet stove, and I had no idea what the problem was. It, it has to do with a vacuum, uh, loss of vacuum. And so I was checking sensors. I checked the, there's a little rubber tube um, in there. I was checking that because I said that could be brittle, but this is a pretty new unit. It's, it was made in 2018. Well, uh, come to find out we had some high winds and my chimney outside uh, had come loose and it moved around a little bit and it disconnected inside the, the pellet stove, it disconnected um, the chimney going into it. So that was enough to set off the E1 um, error code for loss of vacuum because it wasn't completing, I guess, that loop. It wasn't drawing the air out as fast as it should be. So um, it's been running now for 20 minutes and I haven't been able to have it run that long in a long time. So I'm hoping that solved the problem. And I just wanted to share with you though, you know, some things that I do. Oh, another thing for safety. Um, because it may take a little while to heat up. I may not be in here the whole time. I am in here when I have the bullet heater because again, that's, I'm not quite as comfortable with that, but the pellet stove is pretty self-contained and so I'm not too worried safety factor wise on that because it's got all those things that I couldn't even get to start because it's got so many safety features. But I do have cameras in here and uh, I've got a uh, uh, fire detector also that is interconnected wirelessly. So if a fire detector goes off in here, then I will hear it over where I may be um, passing the time while my uh, area is getting warmed up. Uh, for cooling, even though we're past that now and I'm about ready to close it up, but I wanted to show this to you before I close it up, I've got a swamp cooler. 
So swamp coolers are great in low humidity environments only. It does not work in um, where I originally came from, Maryland, because humidity is too high. But uh, that swamp cooler, um, it's a lot cheaper to run than an air conditioner because it is just passing air over um, water-soaked filters. And then an air blower, you know, sucks in that air and brings it into, that, into um, my uh, work area. And that has been able to keep it below 85 degrees, I think just about every day, even when we've gotten up to 115, 120 outside. So if you live in a desert area, I would highly recommend getting a swamp cooler. And of course I got that used also. Yeah, whenever you can get a good deal, grab it. So, you know, people move. It's one of those things that generally aren't built into the house. So when people move, they sell all sorts of things. They sell their pellet stoves, their, their um, swamp coolers, their bullet heaters, their space heaters. So don't buy new when you can buy used. Save money. All right. So anyhow, I hope that is helpful for those of you that are wondering what you're going to do to work in your your workshop and the temperature is too cold or the temperature is too hot outside. Hope that helps you out. Let me know down in the comments and I will talk to you later. God bless. Bye.